Hello, welcome to this edition of the Institute. In this one, we are going to look at a revision of Newton's third law. So the way we always learn Newton's third law is that famous kind of phrase, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Now, when we discussed this back in chapter four, I highlighted the fact that actions and reaction were actually forces. So that was very important. And the other part of this that's very important is this equal and opposite. Interestingly enough, historically, if you look at Newton's Principia, which is his book on physics, he never actually uses anything about equal and opposite reactions, action, reaction type of concept. Uh, Newton's third law is not stated this way at all. Instead, he says that for any closed system, the total quantity of motion is conserved. So this is the way Newton actually described it. For every closed system. Now what that means is that's a situation where we're not looking at external forces. So we don't care about any kind of external forces. So no external forces. For every closed system, the total quantity of motion is conserved or is constant. So couple of key things, the total quantity and then the word motion. What does he mean by motion? We sort of introduced this a little bit when I was um, showing the video that started this chapter. Um, the concept of momentum originally was described as motion by Newton. So when he says motion, he really means momentum. So Motion is really a fancy way of saying momentum, and therefore what he's saying is that the total quantity of momentum is conserved or momentum conservation. Momentum conservation. So the best way to kind of look at this is actually with an explosion. So I have this kind of toy bomb here. It has a certain mass and it's just sitting here. So it has this mass and we're gonna assume that it initially has no velocity, so it's at rest. And then as that fizzes down and eventually it explodes, um, we have after the explosion, something happening, we have the two pieces of this bomb moving off from each other. One way to think of this is with Newton's third law, that each side of this bomb are actually going to push on the other side. So if I imagine that I'm going to call this one M1 here, basically this piece is going to push that one. So there's going to be a force of object number one on object number two. So that would be an action force during this explosion. The reaction force to that we know is that object number two here would push back on object number one. So there would be a force of object number two on object number one. According to Newton's third law, these should be equal and opposite to each other. So that's kind of what I'm going to use is I'm gonna use this concept. I'm gonna say that the force of two on one is equal and opposite to the force of one on two. Now the next step is when I have some kind of explosion or some kind of movement between these things, that that explosion is gonna happen for a set amount of time. So the time for the explosion is the same for both objects, same. So in other words, if this explosion took three milliseconds, it's 
three milliseconds for this object to be pushed and three milliseconds for that object to be pushed. So the, the times are going to be exactly the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides of these this quantity by the time of the explosion or the time of the interaction or the time that they're pushing on each other. Now the reason I do that is now my left side, this is an impulse that's acting on object one. So object two is pushing on object one. So this is going to cause a change in momentum of object number one. So it's going to be the change in momentum of object number one. So kind of just keep that in mind. Um, actually, I'm going to do something. I'm going to change this and I'm going to actually draw this not in red, but in green so that you understand that this object number one over here is my green object. And then object number two over here would be my red object. So even though it's a force of object two on object one, so I drew it as red, it's going to cause a change in momentum of object number one. So we'll deal with that. Then over here, what I have is this should be equal and opposite to, notice I have the same situation. I have an impulse that's acting on object two. So this would be the change in momentum of object number two. So now what I've done is I've changed it from this concept of impulse or forces or actions and reactions into momenta, which is what I want down here. I want to actually deal with momentum or uh, motion. So I'm going to play around with equations here. So on the left side, this change in momentum really just means because um, the mass of this object is a piece of the original mass, but during this explosion, it's not going to change. So I'm just going to kind of bring that out. So this is going to end up being mass number one times, and a change in velocity is always a final minus an initial. So this would be the final of number one minus mass number one times the initial of mass number one. So if you get really technical, Newton actually realized that the total quantity of motion was conserved. So both the mass and the velocity could be changing. So if this piece was actually breaking apart as it's moving, that would also be a part of this. So it, it actually to write it like this, where the delta is in front of both the mass and the velocity is very important. It changes the equation a little bit. Then on the right side, what I have is it's equal and opposite to the other stuff. So I'm going to write the basically the same thing. So this is going to be mass number two times VF of two minus mass of two times VI of two. And then close that off. But this negative sign is going to kind of cancel through. Now, I always like to think of this as a conservation law, which is a way I like to think of conservation laws is whatever initially you have is equal to whatever the final is. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to bring all the final stuff over to one side. So if you notice, I have a minus here with the VF2 is I'm going to add that to the other side. So if I add that to the other side, it's going to become positive. So on the left side, what I'm going to end up having is I'm going to have mass number one times the final velocity of particle number one plus I'm going to have mass number two times the final velocity of particle number two. Then on the right side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take this and I'm going to add that to the other side. Now, your first instinct is, oh, this is going to be negative. But if you notice, it was minus this entire quantity here. So this negative and this negative is going to actually make this positive. So both of these are going to be positive on the right side. But what I end up with is mass number one times the initial velocity of particle number one plus mass number two times the initial of particle number two. And this is momentum conservation. Now, in our particular case, what is the initial velocity of both of these masses? The initial velocity happens to be zero. So the entire right side ends up becoming zero in our example here. So really what I have is I have these two momenta 
are going to happen afterwards, and they would have to equal each other but be opposite of each other. So really, if I look at mass number one, it's going to be moving with a velocity one, but it's moving to the left. So this is to the left. So I might treat that as a negative velocity. So this would be a minus m1 times v1. And then over here, I have mass two and its final velocity, which is just, they just label it as v2, but it's to the right. So that might be a positive velocity. So this would be mass number two times velocity two. And so since they equal zero, really what you're gonna find is they're gonna have the same quantity of momentum. So mass times velocity is going to be the same. So mass one times velocity one is going to be the same as mass two times velocity two. They might not be the same masses. And they might not be the same velocities, but the product should, or the sum should actually add up to zero. But our general case for Newton's third law is this one. This is momentum conservation. Hope you enjoyed this edition of the Institute. Um, I'll talk more about momentum as we continue into chapter seven.